My name is Richard Martina. I am a researcher at the Amsterdam University of Applied Sciences, and I am presenting a paper that um, I wrote together with um, OSCOM. Um, we recently published this paper in the Journal of Clinical Production, and it's basically trying to find out what are the minimum practical guidelines to enable designing, re recycling, collaborative and scalable business models. So let me start first with the background of the study. So it's not a secret that today we face many sustainability problems. So we have biodiversity loss, chemical pollution and climate change. So many says that one solution is to replace or they can make dispose model with the circular economy. So in this paper, we define circular economy as a regenerative system in which resource input and waste emission and energy leakage are minimized by slowing, closing and narrowing material and energy loops. So a circular economy, of course, requires companies to adopt circular business models. So we define business model as a conceptual re representation of how an organization functions. One type of business model is a circular business model. Uh, we define it as those business models specifically aiming at solutions for the circular economy through a circular value chain and stakeholder incentive alignment. And then a category of um, circular um, circular business model is recycling business models. Um, these are resource strategies to preserve the value of products and materials to minimize the use of virgin materials. There are a lot of types of recycling business models. A lot of things are being recycled. Um, so for instance, um, think of e-waste, uh, think of plastic, but in this study we focus then on um, textile and then the recycling business model is the most used business model to realize the circular economy. So a major problem is that many recycling business models, they never scale and reach their intended impact. So when companies um, try to implement them in textile, for instance, they have to think about the photo on top um, is 100% recycled fibers used in clothing. Um, but ultimately, what we see often is that these companies arrive in the photo example on the bottom is that they just take the products, they sort it by material, color, and then basically cut into square patches. And then they are, they are used as cleaning cloths, right? So um, they don't do upcycling, they do downcycling. So there are many myriad problems with recycling and these are on several levels, such as the advocacy of return materials, availability of technology, but we focus in the study on the business model. So developing recycling business model is complex as it needs to consider multiple complex principles of the different dimensions of recycling, collaborating and scaling. Examples are the low quality of materials that companies um, take back, the openness, flexibility and trust required to collaborate and the lack of financial capital to scale and this financial capital is a problem faced by many SMEs. So scholars, they have been trying to develop principles then for these solutions, but often a critique by practice and then these SMEs is that the principles remain abstract, very theoretical and very difficult to implement. So that's why um, the research question that we addressed is what are the minimum practical guidelines for recycling business models? It also take into account the collaborative and scalability dimensions and put emphasis on minimum practical guidelines. So we built on Brewer and co-authors. They provide four guiding principles for developing sustainable business models, sustainability orientation, extended value creation, systematic thinking and stakeholder integration. We basically take these four different principles and we apply it to the recycling business models. We have not seen this being done in the literature. 
a bit about the empirical context. So we selected the project, the project a long name. So it is called Reusing Circular Urban Fibers for Urban Sheet Based Products. In short, Recurve Up. So it concerns the reuse of textile fibers to develop biocomposite products and it's executed by a consortium of university um, in we are the, in the lead and then including industry partners and it is financed by the task force of applied research in the Netherlands. It is a continuation of Recurve, not a project where we develop the biocomposite material based on reused textile. So in the Recurve, the fibers that were harvested from coffee bags from a big company, um, a big coffee producer in Holland, and also waste products from an office furniture manufacturer were combined with bioplastics to create new biocomposite material. We call this material the recurve material, and it is lightweight, flexible, and contains high acoustic properties. So these photos show a few examples of this material. There are different colors because we mix it with jeans, and then different thickness. On the um, left-hand side, you see that the material has been pressed, so it became hard. And on the right side, you can see examples of the material that is not pressed, so it's soft. Um, in this graph, you could see how different composition of two layers soft or two layers hard, or a combination of that performs um, in acoustic um, acoustic test. A bit about the research strategy. So as the aim of the study is prescription driven and solution focused rather than description driven. So we followed Aachen and used an approach based on the design science methodology. So the objective was to develop then these practical guidelines for designing the recycling business model. So we consider then these practical guidelines of a set of tested and grounded technological rules. So we organized the research process in three subsequent phases, definition, field testing and evaluation. In the definition phase, we developed principles from the literature review and semi-structured interviews with experts. In the field testing phase, we designed recycling business models for three cases using then these principles. Um, students created the different products. Um, we conducted a workshop with value chain stakeholders. We did semi-structured interviews with potential customers and with representatives of the focal firms to be able then to develop the, um, the business models. And also, um, we derive the practical guidelines then from the design recycling business models. So the three cases were one is about the modular sealing, one is about the modular partitioning, and one is a privacy noise cancelling screen. In the evaluation phase, we conducted a cross case analysis to determine the minimum practical guidelines for this collaborative and scalable recycling business model. So we use the framework developed by Ludicke, Front and co-authors then to design the recycling business models. According to this framework, then you have four dimensions of the business model, the value proposition, delivery, creation, and value capture. So, um, so we basically arrived at 18 guidelines from the literature review. Um, so to give you a few examples how collaboration, um, recycling and scaling dimensions are within the guidelines. So if you look at the guiding principle two, the developed product should fit within existing product categories that relates to scalability principle. So if you look at guiding principle 11, develop a working agreement that serves as a governance mechanism for your partner collaboration. It's about collaboration, of course. And then if you look at number 16, make use of your waste in your product made from recycled materials that is related to recycling. For all of these uh, practical guidelines, um, it's based in literature, so we have different motivations for them. Um, I will give you a few examples a bit later on, but 
uh, please refer to the paper for the comprehensive overview. So we also link the guiding principles to the design um, recycling business models for the three cases. Um, it's very challenging to provide you a complete overview of the design business models. Mm, so I just give you an example and ask you again to read the paper if you are interested in the entire picture and business model. So this, ex this example is from ceiling scope value proposition. So they, um, the product they developed is open sculptural and modular. So that fits with guiding principle one, which is then develop a product that is functional and beautiful next to sustainable. So open modular that is functional. Sculptural relates then to this beautiful aspect. It's a ceiling system that's the product category. So develop products that fit within the existing product categories. And then lights and acoustic panels can be installed within the system. So uh, the design, um, the practical guideline is then design the product to fit with existing comp complementary products. So through the cross case analysis, then we derive six reoccurring minimum practical guidelines. So the first one is develop a product that is functional and beautiful next to sustainable. Uh, we see support in the literature, for instance, Bones and Ludic in front. They state that value propositions to, should target the environment and consumers. So it's not only functional for the consumer, but sustainable. Another example is that Franco states that customers are unwilling to sacrifice function. So the function should be combined then with the sustainability aspect. So the second one is practical guideline two: develop the product to fit within existing product categories. So we see, for instance, Johnson and Russo, they state that to be able then to increase purchasing um, intentions of products, one way is then to use existing product categories because customers, they're already familiar with that. They know how to use this, how, how they know how, what to expect from it. Um, the third one is provide a tapex service for your customers by collecting the end of a uh, life product. Um, the fourth one, the use of waste of a customer directly in the product for that respective customer. Again, that relates to tangibility. So if you make it tangible for the customer, how its waste or his or her waste is being used, then that becomes a determinant factor for the behavior towards sustainability. So the fifth one, make the recycled component visible. So green visuals increase the positive assessment of environmental claims. And then finally, work with collaboration partners with whom you have similar, not necessarily complete overlapping, so similar ideas slash outlooks on sustainability. So there's a lot of support in the literature for that as well. So we seek then to provide two contributions. The first one relates then to collaboration is not a sine qua non within a single factor. So basically what we state is that when companies collaborate across multiple sectors, um, so it's, it's very important this collaboration to be able to have recycling business model. But if you have vertical integration where one company operates across the entire value chain, it's not necessary to collaborate anymore with others to be able, for instance, to take the waste textile from the customer. Um, so in, within single factor, this collaboration is yeah, it's not important. The second contribution is regarding the lease construct as a take back system. Um, often what you see in the literature is that PPS, so these are being promoted as um, a very good way where the company does not sell its inventory but remains owner, so they will lease it instead. But what we see is that in the recent literature, they say that the PPS and the lease construct are only good in certain conditions. And what we see is that for these type of companies, um, it basically becomes an inhibitor and it makes scalability of the business model difficult. Why? Because if you lease, then it takes more time 
to recoup the investment. So you have to pre-finance the inventory. Um, it takes more time to recoup the investment on the assets. And then so the return on assets decreases. So it becomes more difficult to attract capital investments. And um, what we see is that the SMEs often they have problems attracting capital already. So it really becomes then a problem if they use lease constructs to be able then to scale the business model. So we do have some limitations in future research suggestions. So one of them is that we focus only on B2B market. It's about textile and fibers um, and in Holland. So we basically state that maybe a um, new context should be studied to business, to consumers, other types of um, recycling products and then outside of Holland. The second one is that we suggest additional testing of the practical guidelines in order to increase the generalizability. And then finally, we state that we develop these business models, but we have not implemented them. And often when you implement business models, you come to new insights and the new insights could lead that you need to change, tweak, modify the business models. So we suggest then that companies engage in this experimenting with researchers, experimenting of the business model to be able then to have a better, um, more in-depth view of how the or which practical guidelines are very important. So with that, I would like to thank you for your attention. And then I'm looking forward to your comments and your questions.